Alright y'all, new video here for you at request. New cockpit prep setup video to include the interactive co-pilot Rachel through LC5. What Ryan and the guys have done here with the LC5 program and Rachel is absolutely incredible in court, including of course all the things that they already had, the dispatch weather performance. Co-pilot obviously just adds another layer to this that makes your life flying a heck of a lot easier on VATSIM dealing being able to just talk to ATC and fly the airplane instead of having to manipulate all the switches and do all the flows. So we'll hop right into a cockpit set up and prep. I'll probably even take you up to maybe 18,000 feet just to get you uh, a real nice preview of what she can do. So we come into the aircraft, of course, we would do all our flows and checks and circuit breakers, fire extinguisher, break, uh, gear pins, log book, all the cards, flight deck items, of course, do a safety check, make sure all the levers and switches are in a position that we're happy before we apply power to the aircraft. Once we do so, next thing we usually do is do a fire warning check just to make sure that the fire warning uh, detection and extinguishing works properly on ground, on battery power rather. And uh, I'm sure that squib for that APU is fine. We'll go ahead and bring on the ground power and get it to a point where Rachel, I think, can take over. Do a few more checks up here. Now I'm install warning I can't do because I haven't had AC power on the aircraft for uh, a little while yet here. I'm just going to go ahead and set up the overhead panel the way I normally would. Just running through all my personal checks. Checking every switch, top to bottom, left to right, kind of like a book, right? I'm going to go ahead and start the APU now, so I don't forget to do so later. Checking the probes. He's off, he's on. We'll check the cockpit voice recorder. And, of course, we don't do this anymore, but we can do it anyway. Why not? Wing body overheat test. There they are, the lights. We're going to let Rachel set up her panel. And I think that pretty much handles that. Hopefully I didn't miss anything there. We'll come down into the FMC. FMC position with the GPS. We'll pop that in there. Now that everything is aligning, we've got some takeoff data here too. Uh, we've got our dispatch release number two. I don't know why exactly, but uh, I've got number two. Uh, 38 minutes in route, looking at my times there, 8787 kilos, not going to match my sim, obviously. Uh, 132.6 landing weight limited. Uh, looking at plan takeoff weight of 23.9, obviously well below that, even below our max landing gross weight. So if I do an emergency return, I'm actually already underweight. 23,000 feet, looking like we need 8,000 pounds of gas for min takeoff, 8.5 for min planned. I'm not doing anything fancy here, no extra fuel. I'm not worried about anything like that. It's just purely demonstrational purposes. I'm not doing an event, so I'm not adding any extra gas for any of that kind of stuff. Got a tailwind there, cost index of 40. The weather, you'll notice that it's actually uh, pretty crummy. I'm showing some rain here, cloudy skies, some lightning even in the area, 2993s on the meter. Forecast, I'm not going to waste all your time with all that. We're not going to go all the way to Grand Rapids, but there's the weather in Grand Rapids. Performance, we did run this as five good, runway 22 left. Not worried about bleeds or anything here. Wind shear, no mention of that in the, in the weather, so we didn't bother going with any of that. So let's get her started. Flight deck preparation. Flight deck preparation. Check. All right. So now that we've got our dispatch and performance, we can go ahead and get her started. And you can see she's already going through some of her checks. You can notice the lights that she's testing. The, uh, you might have heard the oxygen test there. Let's see, our APU failed the fire. So let's try that again. That's a bug you get occasionally. Not going to worry about it too much. She's setting our panel up here. We're going to go 3,000 feet on the midway departure. Got our flight directors on. She's setting up my EFP here off of 227. She's already got my barrel mins set for takeoff. Altimeter set. She's testing the ground procs currently as we speak. We're going to go and uplink to FMC the oh, dispatch up. information. Let her Wind handle shear. all that Wind while shear. I do the rest of what Terrain. I want to do. 
what I want to do is I'm going to start the MCP, make my way here to the EFIS control panel. Barrel ref is already set. Min's already, uh, I'm sorry, the altimeter's already set. She's doing her test there. I'm going to come back to that. So we'll start here, come this way, checking all our lights, do a lights test. Of course, the sim, there's not going to be burnt out lights, but we'll say we looked at that. Our brakes RTO. Fuel flow reset. All our levers and knobs are where we want them. They all match up. Now that she's done there, doing her TCAS. Turn on a few things of my own. TCAS test passed. All right. I always do a hoof check too. That's hydraulics, oil, oxygen, and fuel. Make sure that everything is proper. Looks like we got our gas. 8.5. So we're good to go there. Root up link. I don't want to get out of sequence here too much, but we'll go ahead and get some of that stuff going. Try to keep this thing moving. Of course, my screens are extremely bright. Uh, we'll keep on going here, though. We'll get to some of that stuff eventually. I do go ahead and check the stab trim cutout switches. It's not in any sort of flow. That obviously doesn't work uh, on the NG. It does on the Max. Now that we got AC power to the ship. Check and get the wheel well light as well. For grins, we can come over here and check that squib that we didn't see the first time. Cargo bin. And transponder, you know, we didn't we don't, we're not on the network, so nothing fancy here. We'll just set something. She already tested that. It's got us in TRARA. Our air on rotor trim is centered. All that stuff. We're looking good so far. I'm going to bring these down. It's driving me crazy. A little too bright. Anyway, set it where you need it. Nothing fancy. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Sorry, you're bothering me. Roll these up a smidgen. And, of course, the one up here as well. All right, APU is up. We'll go ahead and throw that on the bus so when we go to push, we don't forget and end up with a embarrassing, embarrassing little uh, ordeal. All right. I'll get her rolling on her performance. So I'm going to click uplink to FMC and watch that right side screen while I'm messing with the left side here, and you'll see everything that she's doing with the performance data. Of course, when I did uplink to FMC for the dispatch, she did the fuel... She started, I believe, all this process here. We are Southwest 1581. Pop that in there. My flight number also goes in here. Not that big of a deal, but as long as you put it in this spot here, it'll also show up on your prog page, which is kind of nice. Rooting, uh, midway seven, two two left. Shows a vector, thousand feet, two twenty seven vector. Lukey Gipper, and then we would have been going to the Grand Rapids airport. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there, and we can then close that discontinuity. There's no reason for that. You can still see her hacking away over there, which is awesome. Uh, really does an awesome job. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set up her screen as well. Make sure that we're on the same page. Now, while she's doing that, we can run through a few other things here. We talked about the dispatch release, performance, some of this stuff already. Again, our numbers, as we do with some of these things, we'll be referencing the LC5, making sure that we're reading here and verifying in the FMC as we go through these checklists. Of course, we already did our flow, so our before star originating should be pretty, uh, should be easy and ready to go at this point. Uh, checklists, so on the set page two here, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the briefings. We're gonna take this thing up to 18,000 feet as if we were going to Grand Rapids. We're not gonna go all the way there, though. Uh, probably cancel the, uh, the video there once we reach 18,000 feet, do the 18,000 foot flow. So we'll just uh, do our briefings here and we'll get going off the gate. I'm going to go ahead and execute her performance data there. Get on to page one. 
fact, we're going to leave it on the legs. You'll see when we do the checklist, she'll even go to page one for you. So our briefings here, uh, you know, the uh, I'll be the pilot flying today, as obviously I am on all the sim flights here. We have no alternate special airports, uh, no MELs, no NOTAMs to talk about. Adverse weather is just the weather out of here, but there's no wind shear report. It's just a wet runway. Tax routing hotspots are uh, going to be looking at going out to runway 2 to left. Of course, I got the weather here for Midway as well. 2990 she has set for me. Going out to runway 2 to left. Our airport. It's going to be a pretty quick tax. We'd push off the gate. We'd have, probably have to call for push off this gate just because we might have to push on to Yankee. But typically you don't need to, and this ramp is all non-movement at, at Midway. So we just taxi uh, 2 2 left out via Yankee. Uh, Roman conditions, as we said, are wet. RTO considerations. Briefing basically goes, we get any master cautions. Prior to V1, just call the light out. Likely what we'll do is we'll just say continue. That just means our, our abort criteria then is between 80 knots and V1. We're only going to abort for four things. Any fire. An engine failure, predictive wind shear warning, or we think the aircraft is unsafe or unable to fly. Pass V1 will take in the air on the checklist and probably just come back in here since we're underweight, or we could go over to O'Hare for the longer runways. We can discuss that when we get in the air, depending on what the situation is. Clearance itself, we're doing the, uh, we were clear to as filed, we're going to say, so our routing it to Grand Rapids off 22F is the Midway 7 departure, and then uh, looking at Lukey Gipper direct to the airport. Midway 7 is going to say 227 uh, on a thousand at 1,020. We're going to get a vector off of 227 going east. I do believe you get something like a 140-ish heading. So I'd probably just go ahead and spin that in. What I think I'm going to get, maybe even a 130, I don't recall. But uh, you yeah, had spin that in there preemptively and then uh, just be ready to adjust it when you get the takeoff clearance. Uh, Vector to Lukey, Gipper, Grand Rapids. Uh, FMC route is uh, then programmed. Engine failure procedure for 2-2 left is going to be straight out on 227. That's also in my performance under LC5 where it says EFP. So I see a DT direct heading 227, so straight out on a 227 heading. Transition altitude is 18,000 feet, which is standard in the United States. So I think we're up to the point where we can do our first checklist with... Rachel, before start originating checklist. Before start originating checklist. Logbook. Ab aboard. Landing gear pin. Three aboard. Fire warning and overheat. Checked. Start levers. Cut off. Stab trim cutout switches. Normal. Lights test. Checked. FMC. Programmed. Programmed. Briefings. Complete. Oxygen masks and quantity. Checked. EECs. On. Navigation switches. Normal. Display switches. Auto and normal. Fuel. Oh, let's see off our release. We've got 8.5, so 8.5 cleared with 8.5. Center pumps off. Passenger signs. On. Window heat. On. Hydraulic pumps. A's off, B's on. A's off, B's on. Pressurization. Set auto. Flight instruments. 2993 set. Auto brake. RTO. Takeoff warning horn. Checked. Parking brake. Uh, uh. Set. Transponder. T-A-R-A. -A. I live on in rudder trim. Centered. Before star checklist complete. And of course for the rudder trim you're looking here and your aileron trim you're actually looking here with the two switches for your aileron trim and obviously the wheel for your rudder. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing rolling. And again, as I said, well, you wouldn't need a push call potentially here. It depends on whether you need to push on the Yankee or not. Um, typically, we just call for a push anyway. Uh, but now we've uh, got our data. It's all loaded up in the box. We're ready for our next checklist. So, before push checklist. Before push checklist. Before push checklist. Zero fuel weight. 115.7 set. Gross weight. 124.2 cross check. PWB remarks. Reviewed. N1s. 46 over 25 reduced set. Runway. 2-2 left set. Flaps. 
PWB5 CDU5. V speeds. 122, 125, 130 set. Stab trim. Sort of like the real world, you usually don't know what that is or remember to put it in until you get to the checklist. So here we go. And you can't lie to her on this one. She will uh, call you out if you said uh, 6.0 and it said 6.1 in LC5. It will, she will not respond. It's, it'll be incorrect. 6.1 set. Min cleanup altitude. 1620 set. Flight deck door. Lights out. Before push checklist complete. All righty. So we did our uh, two checklists here. We're now ready to push. So we're going to go ahead and start the push. And typically what we'd say to the ground crew is uh, your nose number here. So nose 268. A's off. Throw it's out. Parking brake set. And they'd respond with all the information they're given down here. Brakes release, you're cleared to push, is what we would say. And maybe tail north or tail south or whatever the instructions were. Push on a tango is approved or Yankee is approved. Just relay that information to them. Once they get us rolling, they usually tell us when we can start the engines. Push back procedure. Check. And you can watch her do her thing with a few items there. She made sure Good she put the bus everyone. online there for the APU, like to to turn her lights Southwest on. Airlines start number two. Start number two. With service to Grand so she's going to start the engine up for me. She turns the packs to auto, like isolation. To to I'm sorry, packs off, Shortly isolation, auto, uh, AP lead is on with the uh, number two and continuous, and I'm sorry, ground to start the engine. Oil with a valid drink coupon. There is a beverage menu in your seat back pocket, or you may go to the Southwest beverage menu on the in-flight entertainment portal at southwestwifi.com, where these options are displayed. Light off. This aircraft is Wi-Fi equipped. We hope you enjoy our free TV and movie options. Internet service may be purchased for $8. For more information on accessing free Wi-Fi and our entertainment options, please check the beverage menu in your seat back pocket. We will let you know when you may use your approved electronic devices. Small portable electronic devices, such as cell phones and tablets, may be used in airplane mode during all phases of flight. Functions must be Air conditioning off is going to be the uh, dual bleed there, which is associated. Start number one. Alright, they gave us the all that function. information. We'd say we got uh, two good engines. You're clear to off. They'd walk back, show you the bag for the headset. Oil the wireless communications the bag, the hydraulic bypass pin. When we see all that, I'd say three guys tugged to a bag pin, they're clear. Which tells the FO once she's complete, uh, completed starting that number one motor that the ground crew is clear and we can do our after start flow. So you watch here, she's going to get, uh, when she gets rollback, the red line goes away, she'll start her clock automatically, you're going to notice. Good afternoon, everyone. From the flight deck, this is your captain speaking. I would like to welcome you. Got all the announcements going on in the background with LC5. We will be pushing back from the gate shortly. Rollback. Our flight time today is 50 minutes. Thank you for flying. She says rollback. She's reconfigured the air panel. Left continuous Ladies here, just waiting for us to be clear, the ground crew, moment, crew to be clear, because we can't do anything with the electricals or hydraulics until the ground crew is clear. After start procedure. Or literature pocket in front of you. To fasten your seatbelt, slide the flat end into the buckle. Pull the loose strap to tighten. Standing by flaps. To release, lift up on the buckle. Position your seatbelt. Flaps belt, five. Low across your hip. Flaps and five. And any time you are seated. There are six emergency exits, Control check. two forward exit doors, two overweight Which window Which she can't exits, actually do. She would do the tops. Signs overhead and lights the Captain would do the bottoms, exit. the rudders, while holding the necessary. tiller. Follow flight attendant commands and leave everything. This aircraft Before is taxi checklist. Before taxi One life raft is located in the forward ceiling compartment and two life rafts are on. located in the ceiling compartment on. and cabin. Off. In the event of a water evacuation, flight deck Use the life vest closed and locked. Flaps. Remove the vest only if told to do CDU so. CDU 5 indicates 5 the green light. And Before taxi the checklist, complete. remove the vest right. from the pouch as shown on the safety information card. Clear left. Card. Place Clear the vest right. over your head. 
wrap the strap around your All right, waist. I'm going to go and turn Buckle off the, the APU now. Ryan left Once it so outside, that that would be on in case you were doing like a bleeds off takeoff or something like that. So that's good. I like it like that. You just can go ahead and just flip it up there when you're ready to turn it off. And uh, we're indeed clear of Yankee. We're going to make our left hand turn out here. Get over to the runway. I said clear left. She said clear right. Other commands you can give, any ice on, any ice off, lights on, lights off, for different scenarios or situations. Federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying any smoke detector in an aircraft lab. I'm not going to do the L2, L3 method out of here on the FMC. We've done videos for that. Should you ever want to program the FMC climb page, lines 2 and 3, just to show you how this all works with Rachel. It's actually quite better to actually just do it without. oxygen will drop from a compartment overhead. Activate the flow Get my retractables out. Go ahead and do our throttle burst here shortly and do our before takeoff checklist. I'm kind of waiting for the flight attendants to do their spiel. So we'll just take our time here. And this is sort of realistic. Uh, sometimes we have short taxis. We have to tell the flight attendants, hey, it's a short taxi. That kind of means bust a move on all your briefings. At this point, we'd switch over to tower. Tower would likely call us up here before we got to the end of the runway, actually, and ask us, and actually just give you the takeoff clearance and ask if you're ready. Jets are assumed if you're ready upon reaching. So, we'll go ahead and give the throttle burst, make sure we don't get a takeoff configuration warning. Arm the auto throttles. We're going to do this in VNAV and heading, so I'm not going to arm LNAV. Give the flight attendants a, a chime. And then I'd pop on the PA here and listen to make sure they get the announcement. Because as they do in LC5 here, they'd say, uh, we've been cleared for departure. So, still waiting to hear that. Because on my before takeoff checklist, there's an attendance notified, and so I need to hear this before we do that checklist. I'm giving it another try here. not wanting to respond to me, so we're just going to go ahead and do the checklist here anyway. Before takeoff checklist. Before takeoff checklist. Min takeoff fuel. Verified. Departure plan. Not required. Attendant notification. Complete. Electrical. Generators on. Anti-ice. Off. Packs. Auto. Bleeds. Engines on. APU off. Start switches. Left continuous. Left continuous. APU. Off. Flaps. CDU. Five indicates five green light. Start levers. Idle. Recall. Checked. Before takeoff checklist complete. So you can see that she did the recall for me there. All right, so we're gonna say we're cleared for takeoff here. Lights on. Lights on. And finals clear, runway 22 left is verified. And we're just looking at the signage there, making sure that we're rolling out onto the right runway. I don't have rudder pedals, so sometimes it's tough to manipulate this thing using just the button that I have for nose wheel steering and rudder control. So we'll get this thing turned around, lined up as best as possible. Get the power rolling up, 40, 40 N1 stabilized. And of 
course, one thing that you should have checked as well, too, here's your takeoff, 90.4, so... Set takeoff for us, 90.4. Landing gear up. Okay, now at a thousand feet, check this out. Watch the speed window here. Set speed, flaps one, climb thrust. Set speed, flaps one, climb thrust. As she bugs the up bug for you, moves the flaps to one, two for three. So I was looking for the top of the white tape on the altimeter there, the altitude tape for men queen up altitude 1620. Through the one bug, flaps up. And once the flaps go up and you watch that light for the leading edge in transit extinguish, watch, she'll do her cleanup there of a few items, these two in particular. She does hers, I will do mine. We're off and running. 200 knots, we maintain up bug essentially till 3,000 feet AGL. We'll say we're clear to a higher altitude, perhaps 22,000 feet, which is unrealistic leaving Chicago, but just for the purposes of getting this taken care of, we're gonna do that. Roll it up, altitude intervention in VNAV. Now you watch the next thing that she's going to do is out of 5,000 feet AGL. So we're looking at uh, 5620. Our climb reduction here, if you watch this screen, she will automatically do the, the, the deletion of the climb reduction. I've got my window open. I can close the window out of 3,000 AGL, accelerate to 250. If you did the L2, L3 method, you can program it so that it will automatically jump to 250 at 3620 or 3,000 feet AGL. Temp's good. True air temperature 21 degrees centigrade. If it was not, we can do the ice, and I can show you that. Now here comes the 5620, here she goes. She's doing my climb reduction for me. She deleted the climb reduction. And just for fun, we'll say anti-ice on. Check. The igniters were already on, so she turned on my valves. She would have done the igniters and then the valves for me. Now it says thermal anti-ice on above 10 degrees, of course, so anti-ice off. Check. And she turns those off. She doesn't take into account that we're still below 10,000 feet. That's fine. Now, I would have given us been, ha been on Midway 6s. This is a 250 knots until advised by Chicago Center, so I'm going to open the window back up to stay at 250 here out of 10,000 feet. course at 10,000 feet we got a flow that we can do at some point here we'd have been given direct to Lukey as well let's go ahead and do that LNAV verify here 10,000 feet. 10, feet climb checklist climb checklist pressurization checked start switches off APU. off Ladies and gentlemen, 
use of all portable electronic devices is now permitted in airplane mode. Okay, they got the word. Now we're out of 10,000 feet. We were given normal speed. Close the window. Off we go. 283 knots. We can always change that here if we want to. Let's do 300 knots. Oops, not level 300. I want to go 300 knots. Here. If I can type properly, it'd be great. I'm actually going to not do that, though, because, you know, if you're looking at weather like this, it's probably bumpy, and your air turbulence penetration speed is actually 280. So we'll just climb it 280. Keep an eye on that temperature, just in case you do encounter anything here. Now, you might even ask for deviations for weather, so how about that? How about we do a... Uh, about a 080 for weather. We'll come right and see if we can't climb through this little hole right over here. Maybe a 90. Stay away from the the big puffies there where it's a little smoother. And our cruise altitude was 23,000, so let's just go and set that. I will say I think one of the coolest things that Ryan's got a program to do, now that we're clear of the weather there, perhaps direct back to Lukey, double tap, execute, L nav, and verify. Uh, I will say one of the coolest things I think that Ryan did in the LC5 is the after landing flow. So once you clear the side stripe of the runway, all you got to do is tell Rachel flaps up and she will go through the entire flow. She'll bring the flaps up, auto brake or uh, to off. She'll start the APU, engine start selectors to off. She'll reset her lights. She'll turn the anti-ice off, the probe heat off, and the window heat off. It's a flawless after landing flow. Now we're clear of weather, we'll close the window, climb at our normal speed, which is about 280 anyway. And here we go, we got one more for you out of 18,000 feet. 18,000 feet, standard set. And she did her lights as I will do mine. Obviously pretty awesome. Uh, as I said, gives you the ability to just sort of focus on the flying, ATC communications, that sort of thing. It just uh, makes your flying a lot more enjoyable, particularly as I said that after landing where you pull off the side of the runway, ATC may want you to keep moving. Maybe it's a busy event. You don't need to be stopped there for up to two or three minutes, you know, doing your flows and reconfiguring. Let Rachel do that for you. That's what she's there for, and that's why they made her. Um, I think it's pretty cool use it. If you have any questions, you can ask those fellows in the Discord. Hope that helps. Take care.